Hope Cook here with Dermcast TV. We have Chris Erico. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thank very nice to meet you, Hope. Chris is a Derm PA from Chicago, and he's been a Derm PA for 14 years. We're excited he's here to talk about when biologics fail or when you have tricky situations with biologics for psoriasis patients. So Chris, if you've been a Derm PA for 14 years, I'm sure you remember when we had like two biologics to choose from. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> uh, I When I first started practicing, even in, during training, Enbrel was still really a really new yeah. medication. Um, and I had this really interesting, uh, had a very interesting moment with my supervising physician at the time where he was training um, a patient to do an Enbrel injection. Mm -hmm. um, and basically um, he had like a, a dummy pen in his hand. And he's like, okay, well you press down on your thigh and then you, pr you plunge and, <laughs> and, then you, and then you lift up when it's done. And he didn't realize he had a live a pen in oh his hand. Oh my gosh. And basically, uh, it, he injected himself through his um, <laughs> through his pants and totally freaked the patient out. And so that was it was a whole new experience for everybody. I know now the injectables are so there's so many to choose from. Yeah. And I think that's where as PAs or medical providers, we get a little overwhelmed. How do I pick one? How do I know which one is going to be right for this patient? Absolutely. I, I you know, and. I mean, I struggle with that myself sometimes. Um, there are so much, there's so much to choose from. And because of that, it can really be daunting. Um, and what happens is when you first start kind of um, assessing the patient, you can really kind of get a sense from them of what their goals are. Yeah. You know, is it skin clearance? Are they looking for more psoriatic arthritis uh, clearance, mm -hmm. or a combination of both? And there's because of that, you can kind of go through the different classes of medications and say, well, this one might work better for for this particular patient. And do you also have a knowledge of insurance companies and which one may approve which medicine? So that's that's also <laughs> another really uh, tough niche with this is, mm -hmm. you know, OK, so now we've gone through the algorithm of this is a really important medication that we're going to select for, for that patient. And they say, OK, now how are we going to get it into the patient's hands? Yeah. And that can be really, really challenging and really tough. Um, you know, I think, you know, some some medications are easier than others. And based on, you know, if they're a newer type or mm -hmm. if they're kind of a, a, a more recent addition, um, that can make a difference as well. Yeah, for sure. And do you still use TNF alphas? I do. I do. They're, especially they're a, a big mainstay of my treatment algorithms for people who have a good amount of psoriatic arthritis going on. Yeah. Because um, they're still really the, um, the gold standard for treatments for psoriatic arthritis symptoms for patients who are being treated by rheumatology. So mm -hmm. I kind of still follow that and uh, still go with their their recommendations. Yeah, it's hard in Georgia to get patients in to see a rheumatologist. Like right yes. now, it's probably nine months. Is it the same case? Oh my in goodness, Chicago? nine months. Um, I would say it's somewhere between three to five yeah. uh, where we are. Um, but even that is a long time, especially if a patient has been uh, really dealing with um, arthritis symptoms for a long time. They finally come to you and they're like, "I want this gone now." Yeah, and so. If we do have to refer out, that can be a really big challenge mm -hmm. and a big barrier for them. And I think so often we're hesitant to put a patient on a medicine because we're worried the rheumatologist will pick a different medicine. And yes. So I guess by selecting a TNF alpha, you're kind of like covering your bases. You do cover your bases. Although I, I have spoken with a lot of um, some uh, other speakers, uh, you know, who are very, very in tune to working with rheumatologists. There's actually um, a physician in the Chicago area. He has a practice where um, he's the derm in the office and there's a room specifically in the office and they actually work very well together to deal with these types of um, challenging patients and challenging cases. And really, I've, I've kind of bent his ear a little bit and like, you know, so what do you do with this? Mm -hmm. you, know, no, what that's it, perfect. you know, what exactly do you do with patients who have you know, mild, moderate, severe psoriatic arthritis when they also have significant skin mm -hmm. disease? And is it okay to like just get a patient started on medication yeah. and then send them off to room? Mm -hmm. And he said, absolutely. He's like, would you want the patient waiting, you know, three to nine mm -hmm. months for that? And the answer is no. We want to make sure that um, they are uh, being taken care of as soon as possible. Yeah. How often do you, or, or I was, let's see, 
How often do you switch a patient um, from one biologic to another? Whew. Um, so I personally have like kind of a steadfast rule. This is just my own rule that I will keep uh, a patient out of biologic for six months oh. to really make sure that they are doing well. Yeah. Um, because the thing is that if you look at a lot of the data within the um, product inserts for a lot of mm -hmm. these medications, you can still see improvement even at week 16 to 24. Yeah. And there could be another 10 to 15% that they're going to gain there. And so I tend not to count out a biologic that's not working within the first three months. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know, if they have zero improvement by three months and they're really suffering, then mm -hmm. yes, maybe that we can make a kind of exception there. But in general, um, if, if a patient is going on a biologic and they're seeing improvements, I kind of would like them to wait the six months and okay. then talk about uh, changing if we need to. That makes sense. When you do switch, do you have them continue their current biologic up until the point where they need I another do. injection? I do, yeah. Um, there's only, the only time I, I wouldn't usually do that is if they have to do any type of like surgery in the meantime, if they're looking to do any type of uh, live and live vaccination, mm -hmm. um, then sometimes we have to do some breaks, but I'm very comfortable with, you know, getting full that through that full half-life of their current medication. And then immediately when that half-life is kind of getting to its end, we can start the new one. Okay. That makes sense too. Um, what about a patient who becomes pregnant? They're on a biologic, they become pregnant. Do you immediately switch them to, say, Simsia? Yeah, so um, I, that is also a tough, uh, tough uh, scenario. Um, really, it's all about counseling, about, and also the, um, the, how willing the patient is to actually go continue this journey mm -hmm. uh, while they're pregnant on the medic on any medication. And also, I do like to get OB, OB involved. Yeah. Um, I I like making the calls, but at the same time, I really want to make sure that yeah. everybody's on board with this. Um, and the thing is that we have we have the vo vast gamut of uh, patients who they're like, absolutely, I, I've been doing so well on this medication, mm -hmm. I am not coming off of it. And then you have patients who are like, you know, I won't even use a topical medication while I'm while yeah. I'm pregnant. So you kind of have to feel that out a bit, and then you know, move to maybe uh, you definitely have to move to a pregnancy safe medication if you aren't there already. Mm -hmm. But then beyond that, it could, because it, you really have to ha have a team approach there. Yeah, for sure. Great. Thank you so much, Hope. Thank you.